Hello everyone, I hope I'm audible and visible. Can you all give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine? And let me just check if you all can hear me properly. Can you all give me a quick thumbs up? Amazing all of you. So, <clears throat> welcome everyone for the next session of Dermatology with me. That is uh, Dr. Cheshta Gilwal. Now, I have myself scored only the rank 261 in my PG entrance examination. I have co-authored a dermatology book and I have also received the best paper recently. Now these are some of our top learners who have cleared the FMG exam so I congratulate to all of them. We have two types of subscription on an academy, one is plus which gives you an access to an academy live classes from the top educators and we have iconic which gives you an access to both an academy and prep ladder. I request all my dear students to kindly uh, subscribe on academy either to plus or iconic. We do have a lot of free classes which is known as special class which is available on the platform. You just need to download the app, follow me on my profile and if they require or they ask you any code, please put Cheshta10 as my code. The next is we have a highly effective and updated question bank of around 25,000 plus questions. I request all of you to please use my code Cheshta10 and get yourself enrolled. This includes detailed discussion of the subject also. We have a feature which is known as raise a hand so if you have any doubt you can just raise your hand and ask your doubt. We have uh, the batches which is known as the focus FMG batch scheduled for 12th. The we have target need PG batch scheduled for 12th. This is the price list. I highly recommend all of you a 3 month subscription of plus if you are a need PG 2022 aspirant. 6 month for FMG and if you are in your MBBS right now I would recommend a 12 month of iconic. Kindly use my code CHESHTA10 C -H -E -S -T -A to get additional 10% discount. Starting with the first question, uh, good morning, Mel uh, good afternoon Melissa, uh, welcome to the session. So please tell me the correct answer, identify the blister pack and mark the correct option about scheduling. I request each and every one of you to please answer the question, we have a lot of MCQs which are important for your practice. <clears throat> Identify the blister pack given, mark the correct option about scheduling. So you can see a yellow color blister packet. What is the correct answer? Anyone? Pepampacin, clofazamine, Depson. What is the correct answer for this question? Now please remember, this is a very classical image of multibacillary treatment for children. So this is an MDT MB blister packet for treating leprosy in children. Now in this childhood we give 450 mg of rifampicin, 150 mg of clofazamine and 50 mg of Depson once in a month supervised and we give 50 mg Depson daily and 50 mg of clofazamine every alternate day. Please remember all of the following is the correct answer. Very nice venkatation. Please remember dental Q that you have red color kit. So it's very easy now if you see a red color blister packet. It is for MDT MB in adult. It is MDT MB packet for adult or in the possibacillary also we do give the same packet but the duration varies. So please remember the correct answer is option number 4. Moving to the next question. Can everybody answer this question? A 45 year old man presented to dermatology outpatient department with complaint of excessively thickened skin of palm and soul. He gave a history of similar features in one of his children. On examination, the nails were dystrophic in both the hands, feet with thin sparse scalp hair and there is associated hypohydrosis. What will be the diagnosis? What will be the diagnosis? Anyone? It's a question from ectodermal dysplasias. Anybody can tell me the answer? So this is a question from ectodermal dysplasias.
this is a question from ectodermal dysplasia now what is the clue here in ectodermal dysplasia please remember what happens that you have all the structure derived from ectoderms they are defective for example here for example nail hair is defective nail is defective what is the third very important point you have defective skin defective tooth and defective sweat glands so whenever you get a question which shows the features of the defect in any of these please think about ectodermal dysplasia now depending upon the involvement of the sweat gland we have two type of ectodermal dysplasia if sweat glands function is reduced it is christ semen torren syndrome and if the sweat function is normal it is clauston syndrome now here the question says that there is hypohidrosis means reduced sweating and that is why the correct answer is christ semen torren syndrome which is an x link hypohidrotic dysplasia ectodermal dysplasia okay it is not a case of clauston in clauston syndrome the sweat gland function is normal the sweat gland function is ठीक है एंड इट कैन नॉट बी ई सी सिंड्रोम पुजारी प्लीज रिमेंबर इन ई सी यू विल सी एक्ट्रोडेक्टाइली यू विल सी एक्ट्रोडेक्टाइली यू विल सी एक्ट्रोडर्मल डिस्प्लेजिया एंड यू विल सी क्लेफ्ट पैलेट क्लेफ पैलेट बट दैट इज नॉट अ फीचर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन सो द करेक्ट आंसर हियर बिकम्स ऑप्शन नंबर वन So nobody have given me the correct answer. I hope it is clear to all of you. Can you uh, quickly give me a thumbs up if that is clear? Now moving to the next question. A cell cultured from the patient with this disorder exhibit a low activity for nucleotide excision repair process. This autosomal recessive genetic disease includes marked sensitivity to sunlight, with subsequent formation of multiple skin cancers and premature death. The disorder is. a very important hint given here can you tell me the answer anybody can tell me the answer here cell cultured from the patient with this disorder exhibit low activity for nucleotide excision repair process anyone can tell me the answer there is subsequent formation of multiple skin cancers premature death what will be the answer here please remember this is a classical example of zero derma pigmentosa we do have a lot of dna repair disorders dna repair defect disorder they are called as dna repair defect disorders they are of many types what are these they are zero derma pigmentosa we have bloom syndrome bloom syndrome we have cocaine syndrome then we have ataxia telangiectasia and even trichothiodystrophy are the example among this zero derma pigment also have nucleotide excision repair defect which presents with photosensitivity freckling scarring over the sun exposed areas moving to the next question dental q pujari venkateshan i request all of you if you like the way i teach dermatology please get an academy subscription you can even download the unacademy learning app and watch my free special classes i take free live special class every day at 3 pm so please download the app and watch my 3 pm sessions every day that is absolutely free if they ask you for any code you can use cheshta 10 as one of my referral code C H E S T A ten. This is C. Now here the correct answer is option number four. If you remember, we have discussed a very similar question yesterday. A girl patient who presented with the lesions which were initially vesical, although that is not given, verrucous, followed by hyperpigmentation, followed by hypopigmentation, hypo. pigmentation so this is the stages which is known as incontinentia pigmentae 
विच इज एन एक्सलिंग डोमिनेंट डिजॉर्डर एंड यू हैव डिफेक्टिव नीमो जी ठीक है सो दैट इज ऑल यू नीड टू नो फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन द मोड ऑफ इनहेरिटेंस इज एक्स लिंक डोमिनेट ओके गुड विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग पॉर्फाइरियाज आर नॉट अ प्योर क्यूटेनियस पॉर्फाइरिया प्योर क्यूटेनियस मीन्स वॉट इट मीन्स दे शुड प्रेजेंट विद आइदर ब्लिस्टर फॉर्मेशन और इरिदिमा और फोटो सेंसिटिविटी सो एनी ऑफ दीज इफ इट इज प्रेजेंट विदाउट एनी सिस्टमिक फीचर इट इज नोन एज प्योर क्यूटेनियस so tell me which of the following porphyria is not a pure cutaneous porphyria which of the following is not a pure cutaneous porphyria priya venkateshan dental q pujari anyone melissa can you answer this question i request everybody to please answer this it's a very important question and i got my answer dr priya you're right it is the acute intermittent porphyria which is a porphyria which present with acute symptoms like vomiting abdominal pain dizziness seizures etc while congenital arthropathic porphyria pct will present with blisters and eep will present with burning sensation and erythema otherwise the acute have only the features of acute attack there is no cutaneous lesions in leprosy which of the following is not seen anyone in leprosy which of the following is not seen abnormal electromyography voluntary muscle wasting decreased proprioception decreased response to tactile sensation and increased response to tactile sensation in leprosy which of the following is not seen in leprosy which of the following is not seen in leprosy which of the following is not seen very nice all my dear students please remember the correct answer in leprosy which of the following is not seen it is the decreased proprioception now proprioception is the sensation which is carried through the posterior column tract of the spinal cord please remember in leprosy the sensation carried through the posterior column of the spinal cord is not affected why do you see involvement of muscle this is because of disuse atrophy we all know that in leprosy there is involvement of nerves and when the nerve get involved the sensations or the the sensory and the motor fibers to the muscles are also destroyed so this will cause disuse atrophy giving rise to abnormal emg and muscle wasting now you also get decreased tactile sensation because of involvement of the nerves where do you see increased tactile sensation that is seen in the lepra reaction i hope you all know that when you start the patients of leprosy with multi drug therapy sometimes because of sudden damage to the mycobacterium leprae there is surge in the inflammatory response and this surge can cause development of lepra reaction these lepra reactions can even cause increase in the tactile sensation like hyperalgesia a mild touch can cause pain or burning sensation tingling sensation so both 4 and 5 can be seen but option number 3 can never be seen in a patient of leprosy clear pujari dental q priya venkateshan can you give me a uh, quick thumbs up good the next question is on your computer screen a image is given here so i just want everybody to look at the image and tell me the correct answer patient with single anesthetic hypopigmented patches on the forearm which of the following statement is true anyone the patient with single anesthetic patches which of the following is the correct statement 
Now please remember the only correct statement which we have in this question is option number 3. Very nice. Ashmita Venkatesh Dr. Priya. A single hypoesthetic patch, it means we are dealing with the patient of posse bacillary leprosy. We are dealing with the patient of posse bacillary leprosy. Posse bacillary leprosy. Now in posse bacillary leprosy what happens? You have to give MDT which includes rifampicin, clofazamine and Depson. And this has to be given for 6 months. We never give single dose therapy because there is an increased risk of resistance. Previously we used to give but because of increase in the resistant cases we are not giving a single dose. The risk of complications like blindness, nasal collapse is also very limited in a possibacillary type of leprosy. And for diagnosing and starting the treatment in leprosy, we do not read any of the serological uh, testing or any PCR. We only look at the clinical feature and we start treating the patients with MDT-MD for 6 months or MDT-PB for 6 months. Then what is phantom limb or uh, that is dental cue what happens sometimes the nerves get stimulated for example if there is uh, some problem in the upper limb phantom limb is not very common in leprosy it is usually seen in the amputated limb so that is because of uh, increased sensation through the nerves so patient will feel as if he is having that hand but actually that is missing hyperalgesia which sometimes patient develops understood dental cue not very common with leprosy phantom limb clear now regarding podophyllin toxin, which of the following statement is true? Where do you give podophyllin? That is my first question. Anyone? Podophyllin is a very effective plant resin which you give for genital wart in a non-pregnant patient or in males. Take it. Now what is this? This is a plant resin, true. It is a highly teratogenic drug, so it is not safe in pregnancy. You can even see that there is a high recurrence date if it is not applied properly and it depends upon the application method and that is why we have individual variation which is seen. So the incorrect statement is option number 2. Which of the following statement is not true? The correct answer is option number 2. Regarding Donovanus's true is caused by Leishmania species, caused by Kelimetobacteria species, treated with Miltiphosin or treated by Amphotericin B. Which of the following statement regarding donovanosis is true? Which of the following statement regarding donovanosis is true? Anyone can tell me the answer? Regarding donovanosis, which of the following statement is true? It is caused by Leishmania species, Kelimetobacterium species or treated with Miltiphosin. Please remember the correct answer is option number 2. What is donovanosis? It is the another name given to granuloma inguinal. Granuloma inguinal. Other name to granuloma inguinal. Very very important other name given to the granuloma inguinae. Now what happened in this condition in donovanosis? Patient develops red exuberant ulcer which bleeds on touch, painless, indurated. It occurs secondly to Kelimetobacteria granulomatis species. Okay, And how will you treat? You will either give azithromycin or doxycycline to take care of donovani infection. You will not give anything like uh, you know Miltiphosin or Amphotericin B to take care of these patients. Treatment of atopic dermatitis includes any of the following except. Treatment of atopic dermatitis includes any of the following except. Anybody can tell me the answer here?
ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ एटोपिक डर्मेटाइटिस इंक्लूड्स ऑल एक्सेप्ट वेरी नाइस प्लीज रिमेंबर आई सो थर्टी नाइन यू विल नेवर गिव इन टेकिंग केयर ऑफ एटोपिक डर्मेटाइटिस एटोपिक डर्मेटाइटिस इट इज अ कंडीशन वेयर देर इज डिफेक्टिव बैरियर एंड देर इज हाइपर रिस्पॉन्सिव इम्यून सिस्टम सो यू कैन गिव इम्यूनो सप्रेसिव ड्रग्स यू कैन गिव इमोलियंस टू टेक केयर ऑफ बैरियर but isotretinoin which is a keratolytic agent it will actually precipitate the lesions of atopic dermatitis so it is a keratolytic agent which is never given in a patient of atopic dermatitis it will actually precipitate the condition instead of suppressing it moving to the another question the patient was treated with steroids for psoriasis and on stopping the treatment he develops fever malaise the lesions are seen in the images below what is the most probable diagnosis staphylococcal infections folliculitis subcorneal pustular dermatosis or acute generalized pustular psoriasis which of the following is the correct answer The patient was treated with steroid for psoriasis and on stopping the treatment he develops fever malaise lesions as seen in the image below what is the most probable diagnosis anybody can tell me the correct answer very nice now here if a known case of psoriasis instead of well defined plaque if he starts developing pustules always suspect acute generalized pustular psoriasis both acute generalized pustular psoriasis and erythrodermic psoriasis it can be precipitated by withdrawal erythrodermic psoriasis can be precipitated by withdrawal of steroids next question all of the following infections presents with maculopapular rash except all of the following features present with maculopapular rash except all of the following infection presents with maculopapular rash except what is the correct answer here amazing all of you very very nice very very nice now maculopapular rash can be seen in dengue can be seen in rubella and can be seen in measles but what is shingles it is the vesicles which are arranged in groups where in a single dermatome which never cross the midline it do not cross the mid line so all these features are very very important with respect to all the features are very very important with respect to shingles or herpes zoster shingles or herpes zoster that is it never crosses the mid line uh, you have grouped vesicles which are present over a single dermatome moving to the next question the patient with flaccid bullous lesions involving the oral cavity he has lesions as shown in the below picture acantholytic cells are seen what is the most probable diagnosis what is the most probable diagnosis anyone can tell me the answer here what is the correct answer for this question yes it is a case of pemphigus vulgaris the clue here is presence of flaccid bullae oral cavity lesion and presence of acantholytic cell on zank smear all these features point towards the diagnosis of pemphigus vulgaris now the next question is here ashmita venkateshan pathan dental q dr priya then we have uh, suvin 
which of the following is a true association lichen planus and malignant melanoma psoriasis and metabolic syndrome vitiligo and metabolic syndrome which of the following is the true association which of the following is a true association lichen planus malignant melanoma psoriasis metabolic syndrome melasma yes the correct answer is option number 3 2 sorry option number 2 Now, psoriasis has a increased association with obesity, which includes high uh, waist to hip ratio, hip to waist or waist to hip ratio. Then we have increased risk of uh, diabetes mellitus type two or type one. There is more risk of hyperlipidemias or hypercholesterolemias. it can even in turn give rise to some acanthosis nigricans like features or it can even give rise to development of the cardiovascular accidents cardiovascular accidents is something which is very frequently seen in these patients next treatment of multi basilary leprosy is what is the treatment of multi basilary leprosy treatment of multi basilary leprosy treatment of multi basilary leprosy just now i taught you that leprosy we have divided into two broad categories what are these two broad categories one is quasi basilary and another is multi basilary if you remember the first question of the today's session quasi basilary and multi basilary now clinically quasi basilary is those where the skin lesions are 1 to 5 with or without nerve and if the nerve is involved it should be only one nerve with or without slit skin smear so slit skin smear is always negative but for multi basilary the skin lesions are more than 5 with or without more than equals to two nerve with or without positive slit skin smear for multi basilary type you have to give three drugs for 12 month and for quasi basilary type you have to give three drugs for 6 month so that is how these are differentiated from each other next question anybody can tell me the correct answer for this question a female came with a foul smelling grayish white discharge on examination one of these will be seen on the microscopy rishab venkateshan suveen mukesh dr priya dental q anybody else want to answer this a female patient came with foul smelling grayish white discharge on the examination so while foul smelling white discharge grayish white discharge very characteristic of something can you tell me what is the diagnosis venkatesan rishab suveen what can be the diagnosis of a patient with foul smelling white discharge on microscopy foul smelling white discharge on microscopy what can be the diagnosis epithelial cells with bacteria on the margins bacterial engulfment by the macrophages neutrophil engulf or budding yeast so something which is very clear is it is a case of bacterial vaginosis which presents with foul foul smelling vaginal discharge second is when you uh, when you do the microscopy of the vaginal discharge you will see vaginal epithelial cells studded with the organism on its surface and what are these cells anybody can tell me what are these cells these are clue cells they should be more than 20% of the vaginal epithelial cells should be clue cell for keeping it under the diagnostic criteria of bacterial vaginosis let's move to the next question given on your computer screen please tell me the correct answer of the next question a child with bald patches on the scalp easily pluckability of hair physician noted black dot on the area what treatment you will give in this patient what treatment you will give in this patient
एनी वन कैन टेल मी दी आंसर Anybody can tell me the diagnosis? Am I audible and visible to all of you? Am I audible and visible to all my dear students? Can you give me a quick thumbs up? Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Very nice. So please remember the correct answer here is this is a classical case of tinea capitis. It's a very classical case of tinea capitis, and please remember the correct answer. The correct answer is Griseofulvic. Now, what did I tell you initially? It is not black piedra. See, uh, Mokif, Sujit, Dr. Priya, uh, Dr. Priya, the black dots are on the scalp surface in tinea capitis, but in black piedra on the hair you will see black dots. There is a difference in both of them. Okay, in tinea capitis it is the scalp which shows black dot. What are these black dots? These are nothing but the broken hair. so in the tinea capitis endothrix variety because of spores inside the hair these spores or the hair get break, broken which give you an appearance of black dot but black piedra is something which is very different where you see small hard nodules on the surface of the hair so two different entity this is a case of tinea capitis and the type of tinea here is black dot type of tinea moving to the next question moving to the next question an alcoholic patient presented with lesion as shown he also has diarrhea deficiency of what is associated with this deficiency of what is associated with this tryptophan serine proline lysine tryptophan serine proline and lysine which of the following is the correct answer anybody can tell me i think it's a very easy question and today only i've seen one of the patient uh, so i'll tell you what patient i got today Uh, there was a patient who presented to me with complaints of the lesions, which is very similar to this. He was actually referred to me from the medicine department. He was admitted in the ward with complaints of diarrhea, and uh, there was a history that he is not, he is anorexic, and there is sudden increase in the blood pressure and decrease in the blood pressure. When we examined it. for 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid this the urine analysis it came to be positive can you tell me what is the diagnosis the 5 hydroxy indolic acetic acid was raised with the history of diarrhea anorexia sudden increase and decrease in the blood pressure along with the features like this anybody can tell me what is the answer so that patient was a patient of carcinoid syndrome and carcinoid syndrome what happens the tryptophan is diverted in production of serotonin so there is reduced precursor available for conversion into niacin giving rise to deficiency of niacin i hope you know that tryptophan is precursor for both niacin also and serotonin also theek okay? hai now what happens in carcinoid syndrome the tryptophan which is available it is diverted towards the production of serotonin so we have a very limited tryptophan available for its conversion to niacin and this will in turn give rise to formation of pellagra so it was a very interesting case which we found today only in our opd where the patient the diagnostic clue it was actually very much confusing because diarrhea anorexia sudden uh, you know raise in the blood pressure was it can be seen in any of the condition but the presence of classical lesions of pellagra will help us or has helped us in making the diagnosis of carcinoid in that patient very nice so this is a case of pellagra with tryptophan deficiency moving to the next question rishab ab soni priya mukif sujit venkateshan ashmita please tell me the answer here <clears throat> patient with fever severe joint pain 
she is also developed pigmentation of the nose subsequently what is the likely diagnosis what is the likely diagnosis anybody patient with fever severe joint pain she developed pigmentation of the nose what is the likely diagnosis melasma cheek sign sle rosacea so i think it's a very easy question a frequent repeat so many exams i've seen the same question previously it used to be a favorite question for uh, aims paper we have seen subsequently 2 3 years back to back the same question which of the following will show canker redux which of the following will show canker redux early relapsing syphilis chancroid late syphilis or herpes which of the following will show canker redux which of the following will show canker redux anyone here can tell me the answer ashmita pujari rishab balwant bai uh, then we have mukesh dr priya sujit which of the following will show canker redux amazing all of you so the correct answer of this question is option number 1 now what is canker redux in syphilis we have a very classical progression the first is development of primary syphilis which will then go to secondary stage which will then go into latent phase and which will then go into tertiary this is a normal sequence now what happens when a patient moves from primary to tertiary the infectivity of the patient decreases so when the patient is in primary the it is highly infectious it can infect other individuals also in secondary also the individual is very infective but as he moves from latent to tertiary the infectivity reduces sometimes what happens from latent phase patient can go back to the primary stage by having a reappearance of the primary canker and this reappearing primary canker is known as canker redux this tells you that there is relapse of syphilis and there is again increase in the there is again increase in the development of again increase in the development of the infective syphilis known as early relapsing syphilis uh, chick sign is not dengue it is chikungunya fever not dengue uh, pujari please don't get confused it is the chikungunya not dengue the presence of joint complaint uh, followed by the development of fever 2 to 3 weeks after the chikungunya fever you develop chick sign not dengue clear 22 year old college student with history of intercourse with multiple sexual partner comes with the lesion where you have central lumbrication scraping from the lesions will show what is the correct answer here what is late syphilis late tertiary syphilis not late uh, latent latent i think you are asking latent it is not late latent syphilis means the cutaneous lesions disappears patient will feel that he is now absolutely fine but actually the syphilis is in latent phase you will see the lab abnormality but there is no cutaneous sign and after latent the patient will go into tertiary syphilis okay sometimes tertiary syphilis can also be called as a later late syphilis the answer here is inclusion body inside the cell it is a diagnosis of genital molluscum and in molluscum you see henderson peterson bodies which are intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies henderson peterson bodies which are intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies next question is on your computer screen i'll move this so that you can see it very very easily can you tell me the answer a patient who came with cauliflower growth on the foot his farmer by occupation scraping shows following what can be the diagnosis yeah so late syphilis in that option you are telling okay av soni late syphilis that's what i am telling you late syphilis is sometimes uh, used for tertiary syphilis which occurs very late in its course it takes almost 10 years for the uh, presentation of the manifestation of tertiary syphilis okay now here the answer is chromoblastomycosis i think there is no confusion and what are these these are sclerotic body sclerotic bodies 
also termed as medullary bodies also termed as so sclerotic bodies medullary bodies also termed as copper penny it's looking like copper coins right copper penny bodies like previously nowadays we don't have copper coins but in in the past when we have that kingdom system we had gold uh, pennies then it was converted to copper now it has converted to different metals okay so these are copper penny bodies medullary bodies or sclerotic bodies arrange the following blistering disorders from superficial to deep arrange the following from superficial to deep pemphigus vulgaris bullus pemphigoid pemphigus foliaceus or eb dystrophica arrange the following blistering disorders from superficial to deep in the following blistering disorder from superficial to deep now please remember pemphigus foliaceus is at subcorneal level vulgaris at supra basal level bullus pemphigoid is at basement membrane zone level and eb dystrophica is at dermis level so the correct answer becomes number 3 number 1 number 2 and number 4 that is option number So I think this is a very easy question. Child with target lesion. This again, uh, it's a repeat question we have done very recently. Target lesion on palm and sole. What can be the correct answer, Dr. Priya, Mukif, Ashmita, Sujit, Dental Q, A V Soni, Pujari, Madhurya. Yes, target lesion is a feature of. iridema multiforme it's a feature of iridema multiforme and iridema multiforme is secondary to what herpes simplex virus 1 this is not an example of hand foot mouth disease no there are many students who get confused whenever i give you this question hand foot mouth disease will never present with target lesion it will present with angulated erosions or angulated vesicles okay next question following statement about mycosis fungoides is not true which of the following statement about mycosis fungoides is not true which of the following statement about mycosis fungoides is not true it is the most common skin lymphoma potrius microabscesses are common it has an indolent course and good prognosis and it can present with diffuse erythroderma which of the following is the correct answer yes please remember it will not always show a good prognosis prognosis depends upon the stages of mycosis fungoides we have a patch stage which then goes to a plaque stage then we have a nodular or a tumor stage and then we have erythrodermic stage in erythrodermic stage the tumor cell enters the blood so as the stage progresses the prognosis uh, becomes poor so it it is not a generalized term that it has an indolent course and a good prognosis that becomes a wrong statement here alopecia areata is not associated with which of the following condition is not associated with which of the following condition so here there are actually two answers but you have to tell me which is the best possible answer among the options provided exclamation sign atopy pitting nail or geographic term which is the best possible answer among the options very nice ashmita the correct answer is option number 2 what is geographic term it is benign 
migratory glossitis which is seen in individuals of alopecia areata benign migratory glossitis even seen in the patients of psoriasis even seen in the patients of psoriasis clear five year old child presents with faint hypopigmented lesions on the face you have mild scaling he also falls sick and has frequent asthmatic episodes what is your diagnosis pityriasis versicolor pkdl borderline hansen's and pityriasis alba anybody can tell me the answer very nice now please remember a patient with hypopigmented lesions on the face frequent fall sick and has asthmatic episode it means this patient could be a patient of atopic dermatitis and if you see hypopigmented ill defined patches on the face of an atopic dermatitis the diagnosis becomes that of pityriasis alba clear so the correct answer very correctly said by av soni priya sujit Uh, mukif and venkatesh moving to the next question 30 year old patient with mucocutaneous lesions since 5 years on examination his skin lesions are raw and painful there are irregular ulcers noted on the oral cavity nikolsky sign is positive and his biopsy is likely to be classical of so what is the classical features of the biopsy in these individuals anyone very nice so patient presented with the oral mucosal lesion <coughs> skin lesions which are painful and nikolsky sign positive the biopsy reveals definitely pemphigus vulgaris next question is on your computer screen a 40 year old patient with itchy blisters he often excoriates it the blisters are grouped and mainly scratch marks are seen he refuses biopsy but responds very very quickly to the diet modification and a medication given for his condition which of the following is the correct answer saroj ashmita venkatesh sujit dr priya anyone can tell me the correct answer pemphigus vulgaris pemphigus foliaceus bullous pemphigoid or dermatitis herpetiformis Forty year old male with itchy blisters on his body. What can be the correct diagnosis? Very nice, all of you. Amazing. Uh, Madhurya, Saroj, Dr. Priya. Okay, so the correct answer is D. diagnosis of dermatitis herpetiformis in dermatitis herpetiformis 90% of the patient have underlying celiac disease 90% of the patient has underlying celiac disease now what happens because of the enteropathy they tend to develop uh, you know diarrhea frequently whenever they consume gluten rich diet and we give depson as a drug to which these individual responds very well men having multiple painful non indurated undermined ulcers with edge uh, the irregular edges occur after 5 days of sexual exposure what is the most likely diagnosis anyone what is the most likely diagnosis here Yes, the correct answer of the question is option number one. It is not option number four. 
Now, why it is chancroid? Because multiple painful undermined ulcers is very very characteristic of chancroid, which is because of Haemophilus ducre. In herpes, there should always be a history of recurrence, which is not mentioned here, and they are preceded by development of group vesicles. That is also missing here. It cannot be a case of LGV. Why do you say so? Please remember, lovely, that LGV will present with transient painless ulcers. They are so painless or transient that even it goes unnoticed, and the patient only present when he develops painful lymphadenopathy. That is inguinal bubo. So LGV cannot be the answer. Can never be the answer. And primary canker also cannot be the answer because it is painful. Confusion comes between chancroid and herpes genitalis. Please remember, chancroid has undermined edges, while herpes will have grouped vesicle which forms polycyclic painful ulcer, and they will give you an history of recurrence for making the diagnosis. Next question. Clear? Saroj, lovely, A V Soni, Dr. Priya, Mukif, Venkateshan, Gazal, Saroj. I hope I am clear to all of you. Very nice. So bleeding spots on removal of the scale, which are seen in the patients of psoriasis, they are nothing but the auspit sign. They are nothing but the auspit sign. So when you remove these scales because of suprapapillary thinning, you tend to see multiple bleeding spots. Next question is on your computer screen. Thirty-two-year-old factory worker developed itchy annular scaly plaques in the groin. There is a history of application of steroid ointment, but the plaque continued to grow at the periphery. Which of the following drugs will not be used for this patient? Which of the following drugs will not be used for this patient? Anyone? Any confusion? Can you tell me what can be the diagnosis? First of all, tell me the diagnosis and then tell me the answer. Rishab, what is the diagnosis here? It is a case of tinea incognito. Actually, it is a case of tinea cruris, and because of steroid abuse, we are calling it as incognito. For tinea or fungus, you never give clofazamine. There is no role of clofazamine in treating a fungal infection. You can give terbinafine, you can give cyclopyrox, and even undecyclic acid can be given, but never clofazamine. Falling is a type of physical urticaria. What can be the answer? Falling is the type of physical urticaria. Dermographism, urticaria, pigmentosa, urticaria, vasculitis, or autoimmune urticaria. Autoimmune urticaria. Falling is a type of physical urticaria. Dermographism, urticaria, pigmentosa, urticaria, vasculitis, or autoimmune urticaria. Uh, AV Sony, clofazamine will not work on fungus. It is not an antifungal drug, and that is why you are not giving it. Similarly, like why you are not giving uh, azithromycin for fungus? The same answer, right? It will not work on the fungal cell wall or cell membrane. It is not fungicidal, and that is why you cannot give it. The dermographism is the type of physical urticaria. Physical urticaria means it is induced by the agent which are outside the body, like air. Cold or hot, touch, pressure, then uh, sweat. So physical urticaria can also occur because of increase in the cold body temperature, etc. AV Sony clotrimazole is different and clofazamine is different. I don't know why you are uh, confusing be between the two different drugs. Obviously, you can give clotrimazole. That is an antifungal drug. And why I don't know why you are confusing with clofazamine. Clofazamine is not antifungal. Clotrimazole is a azole group. That is an antifungal. 16 year old student reports with multiple hypopigmented macules on trunk and limbs. All of the following tests are useful in making the diagnosis of leprosy except. Please remember clofazamine and clotrimazone, they, they are not at all 
belonging to the same group theek hai so do not confuse with them yes clofazamine we use uh, for leprosy very nice the correct answer of this question is option number 2 lepromin test it is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction which becomes positive when you have presence of cell mediated immunity so we are not using this as a diagnostic test because the lepromin test will not detect the lepromatous poles of leprosy where the cmi is very low and that is why they are not used as a diagnostic test you can use it for epidemiology you can use it for prognosis but never for diagnosis okay so this will be the last question of the today's session or last second question and then we'll wind up the today's session can you very very quickly answer this <coughs> last or last second question will not go beyond it because i know that you all got tired only 3 or 4 minutes left 23 year old male with unprotected sexual intercourse with a commercial sex worker 2 weeks later he develops a painless indurated ulcer on the glands which exuded clear serum on the pressure inguinal lymph nodes in both the groins were enlarged and non tender which of the following is the most appropriate diagnostic test which of the following is the most appropriate diagnostic test very nice rishab lovely the answer is option number now whenever you see painless ulcer which is hard in consistency or indurated you will suspect a case of syphilis and to look for syphilis you do a dark field microscopy where you can clearly demonstrate the movement of preponema pallidum next question is a patient with frothy green vaginal discharge of 5 day duration and strawberry cervix what is your diagnosis anyone yes the correct answer of this question is the diagnosis is trichomoniasis very nice and in trichomoniasis the drug which you give is metronidazole this is also the five option and this is the question which i wanted to ask here the 18 Uh, question number 18 a patient presented with mental confusion visual and auditory hallucination perceived changes of the body shape swelling of the tongue fear of impending death after he was treated for primary canker of syphilis what is the likely diagnosis so this is something very different i hope you all know this is a patient with procaine psychosis which is also known as hugi syndrome now what happens in neurosyphilis you do not give benzathine penicillin because benzathine penicillin do not cross blood brain barrier so for those patient you give procaine penicillin which comes in crystal formation or which comes in crystal uh, crystallized manner so before constituting this you have to dilute the crystal properly but sometimes the inadvertent injection will cause the entry into the blood and precipitation of these crystals inside the blood giving rise to the Uh, obstruction to the blood flow of the central nervous system giving rise to procaine psychosis so in advertent injection into the blood vessel and precipitation of the crystals in the blood vessel of the central nervous system is responsible for procaine psychosis or hugi phenomena with this we are done with the today's session thank you all of you i request all of you to please subscribe this youtube channel that is let's crack neep pg If you like the way I teach dermatology download the unacademy learning app today and take a subscription using this code cheshta10 you will get 10% of additional discount on the subscription Don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the notification of my class and do press thumbs up if you like the today's class Also we have a telegram group with the same name let's crack neat pg you can also follow us on this telegram group for the class links for the pdf of the sessions <coughs>